Thank you very much to our scripture readers. I'm once again extending my Christmas greetings to all of you, but by his Merry Christmas to all. Merry Christmas, Mfundis. Merry, Merry Christmas, Mfundis. Thank you so much. Mwuti kamza no mama dini shoni pile. I'm sure many of us this year have said this with so much intensity and meaning than we have ever said it before. Thank you God for another day. All of us have been adversely touched by this pandemic through the loss of either a loved one, a friend, or a colleague, or even a loss of a job, a house, a car, or even financial stability. So we dare take this moment for granted. We are in the Christmas season a period of 12 days, which begins today and will end on the 5th of January. Reverend Kamza has already expounded on the book or on the gospel of Jesus according to St. Luke in terms of whom it represents. It is for the outcast, for the lowliest, for the lonely, the isolated, the poor, the women, the nameless, and the vulnerable. The author locates us in Bethlehem. Here we have out of a wonderful revelation, a group of shepherds. Shepherds then were known to be at the bottom of the bottom the last on the line. I can't say that has changed much today because when a shepherd happens to pass by and ask for a glass of water here at my home, I do not invite that shepherd in, but I choose to serve them while they are right at the door because we believe that they are dirty and smelly, therefore, they will leave the smell in our house. I can imagine that no parent then or even now wished or wishes for their child to be a shepherd because a shepherding altogether had no social status. Nonetheless, as lowly, as unknown, as unschooled as they are, the writer shares with us that God shines the, the, or, or the prophet Isaiah, what he once prophesied in the Old Testament is fulfilled through the shepherds. The angel appeared to them in the field and announced to them that the birth of the savior is here. The Bible says, when the glory flashed and shone on them, they were terrified, they were frightened. But the angel calmed them down and said, do not be afraid. Fear not because I bring you nothing but good news. A savior has been born in the city of David. This day, the angel went on to give them a description of how they will recognize this miracle. You will find him wrapped in a cloth and lying in a manger. Indeed, upon arriving in the city, they found things as they were told. They went out and made what was revealed to them to others. The Bible says they returned back to the field, rejoicing, glorifying, praising God for
for all they have heard and seen. Allow me to share with you three characters that I have extracted in this passage. The first one is Mary. When I read of this woman or imagine this woman, I have nothing but great respect for her because she became a rescue that a humankind needed. She did not only compromise herself or her aspirations, but she chose to put others at the forefront, even if it meant losing the love of her love of her, of her life, even if it meant risking being the top of the town of Nazareth. She chose to put others first because this thing that was in her was beyond her imagination, was too powerful for her to comprehend, nor exist. Let me say this to you. When the blame of the fall was bestowed on a woman, allow me to submit, you, to, submit to you this morning that we see another woman, or let me say a second Eve, God raises a second Eve who restores and redeems and brings rise to humankind. That is the first character, Mary, in this passage. The second character that I want to bring to your attention is the governments of that day. We learn that Jesus was born during the time while Herod was in power, he, while he has been ruling for 40 years. Herod who had sent out a word or rather an instruction for the killing of boys. But what I have learned is that his plan did not prevail. We learn that Jesus is born during the time when Herod was was, was, was telling or was sending his men to kill the boys. And today we have Jesus of today who is born today during the word that is sent out by Herod, the word that is sent out as killing the church of Christ, which is, which is Jesus. Herod of today is COVID-19. But Jesus who prevailed then is Jesus who prevails today. When they thought that they had finished with him, then they did not see the resurrection coming. This is what we call the, the, the Christ victory theory of atonement. That is a discussion for, the, for another day. So this brings an understanding or a comfort and assurance that Leona, while COVID-19 or the death of COVID-19 is in a celebratory mood or is about to celebrate, God pulls up the carpet just underneath their feet while they are about to celebrate Jesus is born today to defeat COVID-19. Jesus survived Herod then. He is yet to defeat Herod of today, which is the death of COVID-19. The third character that I want to bring to your attention is we have already gathered in terms of the shepherds and their status that they were not considered nor acknowledged. However, this morning we see a presence of God appearing to the list. God chooses to shine his glory at night in the field, in a place that is messy, in a place that is smelly, we see God who moves from a higher level, coming to a lower level. He does not only come down to a lower level, but he lowers himself to the lowest. We are told that he is born. He is born in a place that is messy. He is born in a manger. When I make my research, what a manger is, a manger 
is a filthy place where cattle or animals are fed. This is where he saw the angel says he will be wrapped in a cloth. He will be lying in a bed. That is, that is the third character. You cannot be in God's presence because, because the, the angel says, or, or the, 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 the reading that we read says, when they were told, or after this presence of God, they were frightened. You cannot be in the presence of God and not be frightened. You cannot be in the presence of God and not shiver. Ask Moses, he will tell you. But he says, the angel says to them, do not be afraid. Fear not. I have lessons after this character that I wish for each and every, every of us to take with as we walk away during this Christmas. The first lesson that I want to bring to your attention is that no amount of darkness can resist the light. The Reverend Peter Story, when in his book titled, I Beg to Differ, in his interview when he's asked what motivated the title, I Beg to Differ, he says a candle is a protest against darkness. Or a candle, actually, it protests at midnight. In the heart of deep darkness, in the intense of darkness, a candle becomes a non-conformist. It says to darkness, I beg to differ. It says you cannot overpower me. It says you cannot overwhelm me. I beg to differ. This is what we attacked this morning with the prophecy that happened in the Old Testament. When Isaiah said, the darkness will no longer be there. The gloom and the anguish will no longer be there. We see a light shining to a group of shepherds. We see a light shining in a place that is filthy. God says, it, God being the light, it penetrates the darkness, saying, I beg to differ to the circumstances of this world. That's the first lesson that no amount of darkness can overpower the light. It says, I beg to differ. Secondly, the lesson that I want us to take, us, to take with as a takeaway when we go home is that this good news is personal and is present. Let me tell you why I say that. The passage that we read or the other translation says, for unto you, the child is born. Meaning for you, the child is born. The child is born today. I, I, I don't know if you understand me. The reason I say it's personal, for you, the child, is born. The reason I say it's present, the child is born today. A light from above or a light from God dwells among us. John, when he speaks of this light, he says, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God himself. He goes on to say that Flesh or oh, oh God or oh, became flesh and lived among us. The, the good news is personal and present. For you, the child is born, not any day later, but today. Meaning that God. When, when, the pastor, when, 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 when the reader of the writer says, for you, it means, it, means, it means that 
when he came down, he came down for you and me. When he incarnated God's self, he self-emptied God's self. It was for you and me, not for anyone else. That's why Kiri, the good news is personal and present. Many of us, we miss this. Many of us, we miss this. We think that the good news begins at the cross. No, I want to differ with that. The good news actually begins today in our language of today when we say God has touched down planet Earth, meaning he has entered the world in a human form. This is the time that the world of the war is won. This is the time that the battle has, has lost. We have won the battle against the devil before he even began it. Because this is where the radicalness of the good news begins. That the cross is just a climax. It's just a climax of a victory that was born, that was won when Jesus was born. Thirdly, the lesson that I wish for us to take is that this light is not contextual. This light is not conditional. You know, the systematic theology taught me that I need to put everything into context in everything that I, I do. But with this light, I should have because this light is not conditional. This light is not contextual. It's not for others only, but the light is for all. The light is not contextual. The light is not circumstantial. The light is for everyone. The light is for all nations. The light is for women and men. The light is for the poor and the rich. It's for lesbians and gays. It's for Christians and non-Christians. It's for the high and the low. It's for the kings, it's for the servants. That is what we are learning today, that perhaps we ask ourselves this question, then why, why didn't this light shine on many of us that we consider ourselves important, that we deserve this glory? But let me tell you, you and I perhaps would have missed this glory because we would be too busy looking too high and missing the things of God or what God offers freely to the lowest because what God offers, he comes from a place of, of highness. He comes to the lowest. So you and I would have missed it. That's why he chooses to shine his light in the field, in the field because we tend to busy ourselves with things of this world and miss the light of God. And God knew, God knew, because if he chose to shine this light in the temple, or if he chose to shine this light to the, to the, to the dignitaries of the state, that light would have not been entertained. It would not have been, it would not even have terrified them. It would not have even frightened them. But God knew that when he shines this light to the lowest, it will terrify them. It will frighten them. It will not only terrify them, but they will go out and tell people about this light. Because let me tell you, you cannot experience God's encounter and you want to keep it to yourself. No, you don't experience God's encounter and sit down. You don't experience God's lightness, light in the midst of your darkness and you want to keep quiet and you say it's a private matter. No, we don't do that. You don't experience safety or you do not survive level five of lockdown and you think it's not the light that's worth sharing
to our to our on our on our challenges of struggles of this world but is a god who comes down and suffer with us i asked the question or i said perhaps many of you are wrestling with the question of is christmas still relevant today yes christmas is still relevant today because a wonderful counselor everlasting god everlasting father prince of peace mighty god is born today it's not only a child that is born but god is born today god is born for you and me so he says you will name him jesus you will name him jesus a hebrew name or it is derived from a hebrew name yeshua meaning to rescue or to save or to deliver yes christmas is still relevant therefore we continue retelling reciting repeating the story of jesus because this is where we anchor or the fundamental truth of our faith is actually anchored this is not on this is it's far deeper than the theology that we learn uh, but it's it, it's finding the significance in the simple the, the the simplicity that god brings to us in terms of the birth of jesus what god does through the birth of jesus in our lives in the name of the father the son and of the holy spirit amen let us pray Mudimu realebuka. Kreste realebuka. Moya o hala lelang realebuka. Ifela kan nete ntate anande mata. Unze uli mudimu wa misenya mi holo holo. Tepo ya dile mote tang. Li fika le stiling. Di taba di so tuali. Le fati le so bukchi. Isali uli mudimu. Yes, Sabalundi di Temu. Mudimu, Lentula Hau, Kimata, Horona, Tatiana Lemata, Kiti Jo, Horona, Bala, Piling, Kiti Aparo, Horona Bash, the good thing. There was some Holita, Mabal, the drama kilo, Rata who Lebu Ha, Hobani Lentula Hau, Kimo Rifuman and Tikarabo, Tatiana Lemata, Kimo Rifuman and Te for Mabaleti, Kimo Tumelo Yawanai. For in this Christmas of 2020, the year that is different to many, the year where we have experienced your grace like never before, the year where we have seen your work like never before, continue to work and reform us, rebuild us, and start us anew, Tatiana Nemata. Do not start with anyone else, but start with us, Tatiana Nemata. When we go out and spread the news of your life, then we spread based on our experience and an encounter with you, Mabale Duamapilo. Real Copa Mabale Duamapilo, Real Rapela, Real Leboha, Real Leboha Mudimu, Hobane, Hayo Mudimu, Yat Hana Luena. Libiton le mata, libiton le bo kwa nkao sapele, ilibiton la jeso kreste morena, limu pulisi wawina. Amen. At this time, let me hand over to the stewards to do the notices. Thank you, Mfundisi. Um, I greet you and I greet the Calvarians. And I would like to say Merry Christmas to everyone. Um, we thank you, Mfundisi, for the wonderful world, wonderful word you gave us today, the word of the light you've uh, shown us and said to us to be the word of encouragement today. Thank you for for the for the uh, profound sermon that you have just done with us now. 
and I have not much. I just want to wish a blessed Christmas and the love and peaceful one with our families today. And I would just want as well to also uh, that the wonderful work that has been done in this year during the challenges that we have faced in this year. We've got a lot of people who came forth, who assisted everywhere. There's people that were in areas where all the communities have. We supported one another and the church as well. There's so many gifts that were then given by the people of God to the church during this year regardless of what has happened, so many prayers that fell on everybody's head and that touched everybody's life, every family's life in our church. As we also say as well, we know the grief that has been suffered by many in our community and in our uh, South Africa as a whole, but we still say today, Mfundisi is giving us, is telling us that hope is born today, is telling us there's still light. There's no darkness that will supersede the light. I am saying today to everyone, Merry Christmas. We thank the Lord. We thank God. We are blessed to have such a community and we are blessed to have all our ministers and all our preachers who carried us through, who gave us strength from the Lord during this year. As we do not have any notices that are called that we still suffer now due to the changes, we will still announce as well on all platforms as we are going to meet, I think if I'm correct, in the next Sunday as well on this platform at nine o'clock, it will be the next year Sunday of 2021. We are still working on also streaming on Facebook. Please bear with us, but we will still be here on Zoom and we will notify and send out all the announcements that need to be sent out on all the platforms. Thank you, Calvarians. Thank you, Mfundisi. God bless. Thank you, Ma <clears throat> Thank you Mama Julani. As we bring this service to a close, Brother Sidima, may I ask that we move to the closing prayer? Reverend Klamza. Is Reverend Klamza with us? Doesn't look like Mfundis. I don't see his uh, name here. Okay. We normally see when he's here. Okay. Okay. So we move on. May I ask all of us to unmute as we do the closing prayer? Heavenly Father, as this service ends and the church is out. Grant us courage to go out and be, and be the bearers of good news to all. Your good news to all. Heavenly Father, just as we have received the gift of Jesus, who is our light in darkness, Help us to shine this light to and among and among your people and dispel the darkness in the world.
Heavenly Father, as we say, it ends. Inspire and ignite the passion within us. So that nothing remains in our Amen. Amen. And now we say the we say the benediction together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Thank you. Go with peace and be the light. Thank you, Mfundisi. Amen. Thank you, Felicity, for the message of hope. Thank you, ma'am. Mami, good boy.